For years living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It's Teaching Tech Tuesday. Let's take a look at some chart patterns, breakout trades, and probably most importantly, something I rarely talk about specifically, is order types you can use to trade breakouts. So for me, when I'm trading breakouts, I'm trading chart patterns almost all of the time. So you need a little bit of prior knowledge before understanding this video, the first being what those chart patterns are. Are they continuation typically? Are they reversal? Are they bullish? Are they bearish? Stuff like that. There are plenty of cheat sheets on this. You can Google a different one if you don't like this one. Just one I found in five seconds on Google. I've done a whole video. I've done multiple videos on chart patterns, different chart patterns, how to trade them. The last one I did was eight months ago. Still just as relevant. The second thing you'll need to know for this video would be Williams Fractals, which you can pull up on TradingView for free or any trading software. So if you don't understand those two things, go watch those videos, figure, with, figure out for yourself what that means, and then, and then come back to this video. So lately we've had many different types of breakout trades. I will go through a few live examples and a few previous examples. So the key here is to understand all the variations. Like, yes, we have a textbook cheat sheet, right? You're going to see all the cheat sheets effectively show this, you know, inverted head and shoulders, Adam and Eve, double top, triple top, whatever. That's all good and well. When the pattern fits that exactly, okay, when it, when it is a textbook pattern, more people often see it, more people often trade it. It does become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's fine. That's okay. When it is sloppy or slanted or a complex, you'll hear me say complex head and shoulders or stuff like that, it does get a little bit more interesting. So what you definitely want to also learn just on back testing or forward testing as you're trading, what are the variations on an Adam and Eve? What are the variations on an ascending triangle? What are the variations? Like how have those traded? How would I have traded those with different order types, right? Because I can guarantee you looking at 500 different coins on 16 timeframes, you're going to run into these patterns over and over and over again. So let's take a look at a live example. This is Solana. And already you can tell just by my notes, I'm saying, is this an ascending triangle? Is this an Adam and Eve? Is this some sort of mix of the two? Is it a complex? Yada, yada. On Adam and Eve's, you'll typically see the Eve, at least for crypto, to come higher than the Adam. Here's the Adam. Here's the Eve. The V and the U, it's a variation on a double bottom. Again, like all this stuff, once you see it 5,000 times, it's just going to come immediately to you. But if you've never heard of this before, you're going to think I'm speaking an alien language, okay? The other potential here for a pattern, and you don't always have to force a pattern on something, but I would argue most of the time in any consolidation, you're probably going to see a chart pattern or able to identify a chart pattern that's tradable. And that's the key here. It's not just, oh, this looks like a dinosaur, right? No, this is, this looks like this. This is what I do when I see this entry, exit, stop loss done, right? Automatically. Again, this is something once you get this down in like five seconds, you can say, this is what I do here. This is what I do here. Done. Right. So I also like this. Is, this is above the cloud. doesn't have a bullish ticket across yet. It's, it's in the making. I like that. This is also multi-day. You'll see people talking about some airdrop that just launched with a few one minute candles showing blah, blah, blah. Sure. Right. Like all fractals are possible on all time frames. Higher time frames always win. The best patterns are always going to play out on the highest time frame. They will always have the highest payoff. It's just better for everybody <laughs> if you're trading this. If you're trading this looking at higher time frames. This is the four hour. Okay. So you have plenty of time to think about this, plenty of time to trade around this. This isn't like some false time constraint on yourself because you're trading in one minute on some airdrop that happened two days ago or whatever, right? So it's above the cloud. It's got some sort of chart pattern or complex pattern here, right? This this would measure. You'll see me measure this. You take the, the depth of the pattern, measure it forward. 209, 220 at bare minimum, right? For this video, we're just talking about the breakout side or the, the pre-breakout side, not necessarily the target side. So before this breaks out, you have entry, exit, stop loss in mind. Ideally, this stays above the cloud. Ideally, this doesn't break below the diag. And ideally, you, you are fully sized into this thing before this thing breaks out, right? Before we break 196 or whatever this is, before this makes a higher high, if you have a bullish bias, if you want to take the trade, 
ideally you're not chasing this thing at 202 saying, oh man, I saw this, blah, 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 but I didn't do X, Y, Z, right? So one thing you can do is use this sort of advanced order type that kind of breaks my brain when I think about it. Uh, because when you hear stop loss, at least when I hear stop loss, I only ever think of, I have this amount of coin or dollars. And if I'm long, my stop loss level is at you know, 167 or whatever, right? That's my stop loss. It closes the position. If I was short, my stop loss might be at 200 or something here. That would close my position. So to say a buy or a sell stop loss might not make sense until you understand what I'm talking about here. But depending on your exchange, you will see an order type option for a buy stop loss limit or market. Okay, so one way you could do this is say, I don't like doing this diagonal piece here. I don't like putting bids on the diag typically or the bottom. I like to buy strength. You'll hear me say that a lot. I don't like to buy weakness, but another part of this strategy could be for any of these chart patterns is to keep buying some diagonal or horizontal that makes sense. That's always an option that's always on the table. Buying the breakout is essentially equivalent to showing up to the train station as the train is leaving, okay? So as it's ready to go, literally to the second, you are there, you're on that train. Once the train starts moving, this is at 207, I can't get on the train, the train's already gone, right? I wanna get on that train, I wanna be on time, not a second sooner, okay? That's what breakout trading is all about. So back to the order types, for the buy stop loss, you're saying you want a bid on the book after a specific trigger is hit in price. So ideally that trigger would be in the zone of resistance, but not at the ultimate higher high. So that would say trigger this bid for on the book once we're about there, once the train is about to leave. I know the train is moving at this specific time. I want to be there on time, okay? Now a buy stop loss market order would be the moment that this thing makes a higher high or hits a specific level, then that is a market buy, okay? And I'll go over a few more examples, but before I do, let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to our trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with a link in the description of this video. Not investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to US and US territory customers by Payward Ventures Inc, PBI, DBA, Kraken. So on Kraken, again, this is going to be dependent on the exchange you're using, but at least on Kraken, there are some advanced order types here in Kraken Pro. And again, as an example, doesn't matter what the chart is, but this is just something that I keep talking about because it looks good, right? Ocean BTC, inverted head and shoulders. One thing you could do here, let's say we wanted to add the stop loss limit, right? The trigger would be where the order gets put on the book. Okay, so let's say we wanted the trigger to be the midpoint here. And often you'll see me draw support and resistance sort of as a zone. And with, with altcoins especially, it's kind of an inexact level. With the higher caps, you'll typically see a very exact to the penny horizontal. But with altcoins, it can be a little all over the place, right? So let's say we, we find some zone or a group of levels, okay? We could put our buy stop loss limit at 1931 sats. We'd put the, sorry, the trigger at 1931, the limit at 1921. So the, the limit would be slightly below the trigger. Or we could just say, you know what? I just want to buy this thing at a specific level. Make sure you have buy not sell selected here. I just want to buy this thing at a specific level and it will execute at, you know, let's say we wanted to make sure we have something on the book here at 2200 sats, which is basically the high here, then that would trigger a market buy. And maybe you want to, as a percentage, have a few limits or a few market buys, right? You can get as fancy or cute with this as you want, depending on what it is, depending on what you're looking at, just to make sure there, that if you have an idea that you want to execute and you are AFK or you're busy, or you only have time to look at charts once a week, you can rest assured that if you believe in the idea and you're bullish or you're bearish, those orders will be on the book, right? Another way to use this would be to flip this. So to say, I want this buy stop loss market if we revisit this high, no matter what. And then I want to set a stop loss limit well above that because let's say we have additional confirmation, okay? And most of the time you'll see us come back to the neckline of a chart. 
So you could set your trigger point again back to stop loss limit. You could set your trigger point for let's say 2600 and you could set the limit for 2250, right? And that would be an add on the neckline right here. You know, you'd be adding to your position on the neckline. One other thing to consider, similar to any stop loss, if we go to Bitcoin here on Kraken, depending on if you have an order on the book and if there is a CF benchmarks index for the product you're trading, you will get the option of last price, which would be the last price on Kraken versus the index price, which is the index price for CF benchmarks. So that's another little consideration. There's also time in force, which is giving something an expiry, good till the end of the day, good till the end of the week, or good until canceled, which just means it stays on the book until you remove it manually. All right, let's go through a few more examples. Here's ETH on the weekly, right? This one already happened, but this broke out in October. And a lot of people kind of forget things. Everybody does, or you just get complacent, or you, again, are just busy doing other stuff. But if you want to make sure you've got skin in the game on an idea you believe in or a coin you believe in or whatever else, right? As a trade idea, for example, again, setting a buy stop loss limit somewhere with a trigger price or the market at the ultimate higher high, which is how I would do it. But even with ETH here, you can see this broke out and came back to that 2150 breakout level multiple times. Additionally, you can also set bids at some diagonal support zone, right? Here's a live example on a non-crypto chart, XLE. And again, it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's gold, if it's crypto, if it's a BTC pair, it, it's all the same thing. Effectively, how I would treat this at the breakout point, even on something like legacy, this isn't to the penny, right? Not all of these highs come to the penny. They come pretty close, but they don't come exactly to the same level. So let's say you want to fudge it somewhere on 94, 95, right? You're just like a fuzzy number. You could put your buy stop loss market at the ultimate higher high. You could put the limit with a trigger at 95, a limit order then at 94, something like that. Basically, you want to make sure that the train is ready to go. You don't want to be sitting in this thing with some opportunity cost chopping around, right? Now, this one I'm highlighting because it's basically ready to go. Effectively, it's well past its three quarters full point on the triangle. That's why I keep bringing it up. Another thing you could have done, again, putting bids at some logical diagonal zone, right? This isn't some perfect level. This isn't always specific to the penny, right? I know people want like exact here I buy, here I sell, I'm done, right? That's not really how this works. <laughs> it's, it's a lot less specific than that. Adding on to the Williams Fractals piece, turning those on, once you start to get positioned, okay, once we get closer to go time on this chart pattern, then I would start to pay attention to these stop losses. Do you always get concerned if you're breaking lower lows in a bullish pattern? I would say yes, okay? So this certainly was concerning. And it's a good example of what you could see on any ascending triangle, which is why you just have to look at 5,000 of these and understand like, okay, this could happen, right? I got positioned in this thing much later. So currently the stop loss would be 78. Until we get another stop loss fractal print, that stop loss, that trailing stop loss doesn't move. And while this thing is forming and hasn't broken out yet, you don't want to be aggressive with your stop loss because it hasn't actually, the train hasn't left, right? Why are we, why are we getting off the train when the train hasn't left? Let the train leave. And if the train runs into problems on the tracks, then you can trigger the stop loss. But you have to give this stuff time. This is a weekly chart. So this is going to take probably another eight weeks to potentially break out. But I treat it all the same with crypto. So a few other examples with Bitcoin. This was the January, February inverted head and shoulders. And once you know and trade a specific bullish example or a bearish example, it, it becomes to me, I think, pretty obvious, right? So we've got the chart pattern. We've got the fractals. We've got some flows, fundamental stuff on our side, even though that's, it's important, but it doesn't really make the chart. So once again, for this breakout, you can either do this manually, obviously, or as we are consolidating, you could say, I'm just going to keep buying, right? <laughs> I think I know what this is. I'm just going to keep buying. That's super dangerous. And I get people asking me this all the time. They say, you're calling such and such. Why aren't you in a trade yet? Well, I like the train that is leaving, right? <laughs> I like the train that's a breakout. So I prefer to play this breakout with these type of orders or manually buying in this case. As this is forming, if you are confident enough that you are correct in your bullish bias, 
I will also 100% just start buying, right? Just start adding a little bit, just a little bit. You want to make sure that you're in the trade at the very least. And again, the Williams Fractal stop losses are going to help you here because with the head and shoulders inverted complex, whatever, you should never really make lower lows towards the end of the pattern. So there's really four chances for you to get in on a trade like this. You're either just nibbling DCA accumulating before the breakout. You've got a buy stop loss limit somewhere in the neckline. You've got a buy stop loss market somewhere at the apex or the, the height of the neckline, ultimate high, higher high of the neckline. And then the fourth option is always just manually market buying or limit buying somewhere, right? And that's another benefit to the higher time frames and just watching this stuff play out over and over again. You understand what's going on. Now here was a few days later after we found another consolidation, called this a flag, pennant, I don't know, whatever. And once again, you get this cluster of fractals and what you can do on each of those levels is set buy stop loss limits at the ultimate apex, right? Once the train starts leaving, where you think it's going to start leaving, buy stop loss market. I'm showing these examples because they've worked out. There are, of course, times where this stuff will break out and then trigger your stop loss. But that's not really important to me. The important part is just knowing where the stop loss is and where the breakout will be. Okay. Because if it works out, it works out. Great. If I get stopped out, okay, so be it. But if you have a bullish bias in the first place with the chart pattern, with the trend, then that really helps you figure out which train you want to be on, right? Am I on the train leaving south or going north? So after this breaks out, you know, your next stop loss isn't until all the way up here at around 61K. With these stop losses, one thing additionally that people ask me a lot about that can get you into trouble here, if you're putting these on the order book, you will notice that on occasion, the wicks will trigger the stop loss. What you always want to see is a candle close, candle close, not a wick, candle close below the stop loss. In this specific case, you may have touched several wicks in here, but you never got a candle close down here. In this specific case, all the way up here, you had a deep, deep close below this fractal, not close, sorry, a deep wick below this fractal that closed much higher. So depending on the time frame, depending on where you're in the market, it's a little bit subjective in that regard. And I would hesitate to put these stop losses on the book unless you are asleep, AFK, busy, whatever, right? Because there are times when market, the market will just trigger your stop loss and then bounce, right? And that's a detriment of, uh, potential detriment of having these on the book directly. But once again, here in this breakout, if you're bullish, it's probably not always best to wait until a higher high because the market may just be, uh, you know, lights out, right? There was really no point to get in or no opportunity to, to get in after the breakout. So you definitely want to prepare yourself in a few ways down there. Most of the time, a few days later, we had a multi-week, we we'll call it multi-week rising wedge potentially, right? Let's say you're 50, 50 on how these break. Let's say you think this is a 50, 50 bias. I don't agree with that. I treat this as a bearish reversal pattern. Okay. But once again, we have our fractal trailing stop losses. These keep moving up, right? Up, 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 up. Okay, great. Much farther on in this pattern, you know, you'd have to draw this like from the 11th onward because before that you wouldn't really see, you know, I was thinking maybe this is an ascending triangle. It broke out as that, but then it got super noisy and angry at the top. So let's say you were bullish on this. One thing you could have done, again, set a buy stop loss market limit combo that you would have had to sort of kept moving every day or you could have set a combination of specific levels, right? Depending on how busy you want to get with this stuff. If you wanted to set 10 buy stop losses and 10 market bids, you could have done that, right? So here at the very top, our final stop loss, right? We trigger that. And ideally, if we were long, even if we were buying on the uh, stop loss markets or limits, we would get out of that position. But you'd have to make sure that that would be on the order book. And again, this is subjective because at this point, based on the shape of price structure, based on the chart pattern, which I assumed was a rising wedge, you have to say, you know what, we're getting close enough to where I'm going to start putting my stop loss on the order book. This is the four hour because it feel it, it felt like at the time it feels like whatever that something's about to happen one way or the other, right? Let's fast forward to today. Okay. A couple days ago, yesterday, I guess Monday, Monday, US open. So. After that broke down, 
right? We spent the next week, at least, playing around in the cloud here on the four hour and printing what ended up being a pretty complex, multi-shouldered, inverted head and shoulders, right? Once we get to about the formation of any type of right shoulder, that's usually when I start to say, yeah, you know what, this could be X pattern. Once you start bouncing to a specific level over and over and over again, you can also get pretty confident that there's probably a pattern somewhere in here. You also have the four hour cloud on your side, some trend stuff on your side, right? So one thing you can do, put that buy stop loss, like, you know, let's say on the 24th, the night of the 24th or whatever, or the 23rd or the 22nd. Again, you want to buy when the train is ready to go. You do not want to buy as much as it may, may make sense, right? Okay, let me buy 62 and a half. Let me buy 63, six. I think this is X, Y, Z. I think this is going to happen. You can always do that. Nothing says you can't. But I think over time, you will find that the hit rate of these breakout trades, reversal patterns, continuation patterns, you're better off just waiting. There is a timeline in the universe where this thing just doesn't play out. And then what, right? <laughs> and then you're kind of you're kind of stuck with buying at 63.6, maybe a stop loss at lower lows, right? So if we do this the right way, we're putting a buy stop loss limit or market or combination of that at the neckline at the four hour cloud breakout point. You know, the cloud's giving you a great level here at uh, 66 and a half. This is hard to see probably on the video, but you had a wick come back to the neckline after the breakout, right? That's, that's where the stop loss limit would ideally trigger. And then at this point, your stop loss would have been all the way down here at 63.6. And effectively, it's telling you if this is going to break out, you will probably not see a, another lower shoulder, right? Because again, we're saying shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, shoulder. We're probably not going to see another deeper shoulder here if this is actually going to play out. And then again, back to the fractals on the current price, it's always going to tell you to add. If you're long on the higher highs, it's always going to tell you to add on the, the short side on any lower low. That's just always going to that's what it's telling you, right? But it's automating it for you. So saying it's always saying where that level is. So that way you don't have to think about it. So in this case, you'd have a buy stop loss uh, limit or market. Again, depending on how you want to treat this between 71, 71 and a half, should you want to play that additionally to the long side. Now there are lots of alts that have had, we're just in chart pattern season, right? You, th you think we're in alt season, but actually, you know, you think we're in edge to edge cloud season, but actually we, we are in, inverted head and shoulders trend reversal season. So here's an example on Algo, a live example. One thing you could do, again, some combination of buy stop loss market and or limit, depending on how you want to treat that at, let's say 30 cents. And with fractals with cloud, you can say, okay, maybe my stop loss would be at 20 cents. And you can't really be afraid of getting trapped here, right? You could say, well, two candles ago, two weeks ago, this tried to break out, failed. This is a terrible idea, right? That's the wrong way to think about this. If you have a bullish bias, you have to be on the train that's going to the bullish bias. Okay. We have to say, you know what? This train's leaving eventually. I just want to make sure I'm on it. If we're stuck on the tarmac at 20 cents, then I can get off. But I'm going to assume that this is a bullish continue, uh, bullish reversal, right? One other thing I never really talk about when you're about halfway on a clean ish head and shoulders. Okay. You can always put bids at where you'd expect the right shoulder to be. Sort of 4D chess move, super risky, dangerous, but also something you can do, right? And this goes back to the confidence piece. If you are confident that this is gonna work out, if you're confident that the entire market is bullish in some way, if Bitcoin has already moved, right? The reason I'm looking at any of these alts at all is because Bitcoin is months ahead of this move, right? On the Bitcoin equivalent, we are at like 260 plus, okay? That's why I care about any of these alts at all. We've already moved to warp speed on Bitcoin. So it's more likely that most of these are going to at least attempt to play out. And then you've got the cloud stuff saying maybe, maybe a buck 50. I doubt it, but maybe. So you will see a lot of examples like this. Flow is another one, just sort of hanging out in the cloud, tried to break out, kind of failed. Same, same exact concept, right? But it helps to see this with repetition, at least for me, to sort of drive this home. And then you can ask yourself, where would I put a buy stop loss? Do I want to just buy this now? Do I want to wait? Do I want to do all of the above, right? Do I want to DCA a little bit? Do I want to put some bids on the book in addition? Just another way to execute if you are seeing these setups as breakout setups and want to make sure you have a ticket to ride that train, right? <laughs> that's, that's what this is all about. 
there are other complex versions of this idea with diagonal lines. Okay. Now the BTC pairs specifically are super choppy most of the time. For this specific pattern, this is a diamond pattern potentially, when these do play out, this, this should be a reversal. In this case, I think this is going to be a reversal failure for ETH BTC, most likely. So you have to sort of get to that point in the cycle of this pattern formation, right? To where you're confident enough to call a pattern failure reversal or a pattern failure. For the diamond specifically, you'll notice it's turbo noisy. It spans the entirety of this and it kind of forms this megaphone and then a triangle, right? As far as the two halves of the, of the diamond. So if we are to the point, maybe mid March where we're like, you know what? I'm actually pretty bearish on ETH BTC. You could shove some asks all the way up here. Maybe you catch a wick or something. Your stop loss on any of those asks is always going to be the preceding fractal, right? This is your resistance fractal. So you, again, you shouldn't be making higher highs above 059, right? If you're bearish and actually going to play out as bearish. So all the way down here, what you could do, this is just basically the opposite of the buy stop loss, the sell stop loss limit, trying to go short. Again, using the fractals, using the chart pattern, your hard stop loss limit on the short side would be 0535, right? And anything additional, any lower lows at this point should be an easy add to a short or a stop loss market. I have a much easier time thinking about this on the short side or the sell side than the buy side just because of the term stop loss. So I would definitely try to get that down pat in your head before you attempt this in the wild. Lastly, I'll just mention gold. Because again, depending on the duration of the setup, the specific pair or product you're trading, if I'm trading ETH six months ago, right? I know that thing's moving at the pace of molasses in January. If I'm trading gold, I know that this thing is extremely slow. This moves at unlike the monthly timescale. So again, this is a great example of something where if I'm sure that I'm bullish, which if we go back to this very, <laughs> this very, chart pattern video eight months ago, right? I'm, I'm setting up this specific pattern uh, as a cup and handle. So if you're sure at any point in this pattern, right, then we can start putting our buy stops, market limit, whatever, at specific levels on the diag, or we can set bids at, in this case, what ended up being an inverted head and shoulders most likely. And then we can sort of blend it all together on the breakout. But the goal of this advanced order type is just to make sure for yourself, once you know a specific setup where you think we're going, you have a bias, that way you don't miss it. It's one way to, you know, you, these don't have to be large positions either. These just can be something as a reminder to say, hey, I want to buy this at X level. I want to make sure I'm there for the breakout. I like buying strength, not weakness in this case, right? So I hope that was helpful. Definitely play around with that if you're on Kraken. Buy stop loss, buy stop loss limit. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.